and then we'll get this party officially started. So we're live here for our Wednesday weekly Q&A to talk about the ketogenic lifestyle, to talk about intermittent fasting, to talk about the gut microbiome, talk about toxins, talk, talk about sleep, talk about carnivore. I mean, whatever you want to talk about, I am game. So if we're just meeting, it's so awesome to meet you for the first time. My name is Ben Azadi. I'm the best-selling author of four books, including my latest book, which is called Keto Flex. And you can get that over at ketoflexbook.com. Uh, I'm uh, the founder of Keto Camp. Keto Camp is the company here that we are on a mission to educate and to inspire 1 billion people on planet Earth. We are the leading authority with teaching these ancient healing strategies, ketosis, fasting, in all areas of cellular health. So let me know if you haven't done so already, where are you watching from? Whether you're on the replay or live with me, where are you tuning in from? Put your city, put your state. I'm here in beautiful Miami Beach, Florida. It is incredible. Uh, sun is peeking out. This morning it was raining, and that's what South Florida does for you. Sunny, rainy, sunny, rainy. Uh, good to see you, Tariq, here on TikTok. So I saw a question come here, and then I'm going to get to the YouTube and Facebook questions. Uh, Lawrence said, I'm week one of keto, 10 grams of carbs. Can I use blackberries or raspberries? Lawrence, congratulations on being week one. That is awesome. No need to drop your carbs that low. 10 grams of carbs is really restrictive and uh, you could get away with a lot more carbs. So you could bump that up to maybe 30, 40. Some people could go to 50 total grams of carbs. To answer your question, blackber blackberries and raspberries should be okay in small amounts, maybe half a cup. Uh, if you don't have insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes, it shouldn't be enough where it'll knock you out of ketosis. You could always test if you have like a keto mojo finger prick, you could see if it's taking you out of ketosis, but it should be okay in small amounts. You have a little bit more wiggle room with, the, with what you're doing there with the 10 grams of carbs. You could bump that up to 30, 40, 50 and still remain in ketosis. And it makes it a lot more bearable. So that would be my advice for you, Lawrence. And let me know how that goes. Joan Carver, how can I get into the mindset to begin keto? What's wrong with me, says Joan. Number one, nothing is wrong with you. Um, nothing at all. And I don't blame you because I've been there myself. I, I have been somebody who has had the best intentions. I mean, ha have you been there before? Let, let me know and give me like a hand raise emoji. You, you know you should do this. I should do this. I should start tomorrow. You have the best intentions. You're shitting all over yourself. But nothing ever starts. Or you start and you stop. Have you been there before? Please let me know if you could relate to me. I know I sure have. Joan, it sounds like that's where you're at right now. Nothing is wrong with you. It's completely normal. And it's part of the brain. The brain is a fickle little beast. And if you think about the brain wants the number one priority for the body and the brain is survival. So when you start to think about new goals and take action on new goals, it become, it's a change to your brain. And the brain wants to go back to some sort of homeostasis, right? So you start to have all these self-limiting beliefs. At least I'll speak for myself. I start to get these self-limiting beliefs. And all of that has to do with the subconscious mind. I want everybody to go study Bob Proctor, the late and great Bob Proctor who just passed away if you really want to understand the subconscious mind. Now, the mind is not the brain any more, any more than the fingernail is the mind. The mind is not a thing, if you will. It's not the brain. A lot of people think the mind is the brain, but it's not. The mind is actually something else. And you'll learn more about that from Bob Proctor. But let's say there's two parts to the mind. You have the subconscious mind, which is the emotional part. And then you have the conscious mind, which is the rational mind. When you're thinking, I want to do keto, I want to make changes, I want to embark on this goal, you're, that's, that, you're using the conscious mind. But then you have something that stops you from starting it or you stop, start it and stop. That's the subconscious mind. And that has to do with something called paradigms. Paradigms are a set of behaviors that are just running on autopilot without you thinking about it. Give you a perfect example. When you go into your car and you drive to work every day, 
sometimes I'm sure you listen to music. Sometimes I'm sure you listen to an audiobook. Maybe you listen to my Keto Camp podcast. That would be awesome. Or you're, in a, you're on a phone call. And you, if you made that drive so many times to work or wherever, wherever it is, you could be distracted on listening to something or speaking to somebody and get to your destination and look back as you park into the garage or to the parking lot and think, how did I even get here? I wasn't even paying attention. You think because the subconscious mind was just running on autopilot. So when you have thoughts that are self-limiting, thoughts that are telling you, yeah, you can't do keto, don't do keto, or don't do that, you know, go back to your donuts, go whatever limiting thoughts you have, it has nothing to do with your potential. It has nothing to do with who you are, and there's nothing wrong with you. Those thoughts are a result of paradigms. These are learned behaviors. It has everything to do with your conditioning. You've been conditioned that way. But the amazing thing is that you could recondition the mind. Alvin Toffler said, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. So you've learned to have those negative thoughts, what I call stinking thinking. What we want to do is unlearn those negative thoughts and relearn affirming thoughts. How do you do that? Doesn't happen overnight, but I can tell you this. The amazing thing about attitude is that you get to choose your attitude and you could change it in a second. Your attitude are a culmination of your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions. Now, there's a difference between attitude and knowledge and skill. Knowledge and skill, if you want to learn keto, that'll take you some time. You watch some of my videos, you listen to some of my Keto Camp podcasts, you maybe come into my Keto Camp Academy, and we teach it to you. It'll take weeks to months to, to years to really grasp it. So, added, oh, excuse me, but uh, skills and, and, and uh, experience, that takes time. But attitude, you could change in a second. You could say, I got this. I am going to do this. I am doing this. I am healthy. I'm healing. You could change that in a second. You could go from a level one attitude, which is poor, to a level 10 in a second. Now, how do you reprogram the subconscious mind? We don't have enough time here to talk about it, to change your paradigm. Go watch Bob Proctor videos, go download his books, do his courses. The man just passed away and he changed my life. I would go as far as to say he saved my life when I was suicidal and depressed. But there's two ways to change your subconscious mind. There's two ways to change your paradigm. Number one would be an emotional impact. It could be a car accident, losing a loved one. 9-11, for example, was an emotional impact for a lot of people that were involved and it changed the way they thought, it changed the way they lived their lives. That's one way to change your paradigm. Ideally, we don't wanna change it that way because it goes you go through a lot of pain. So an emotional impact is not ideal for changing your paradigm. The second way is the repetitive, concentrated action, meaning, consistent, repetitive patterns. That's kind of uh, the same word, but affirmations, gratitude, turning off the news, opening up a book, inundate your subconscious mind with positive, affirming, uplifting thoughts, people. And then all of a sudden you begin to change neural pathways in your brain. It doesn't happen overnight, but that could take place on average 66 days, according to the University of College London, where you create new neural pathways in your brain. And the more consistent you are with it, the faster that will happen. But you could, if you think about the human brain, the average human being, and you hear me talk about this a lot, the average human being thinks 60,000 thoughts per day, okay? 60,000 thoughts per day. It's estimated that 90% of the thoughts, the 60,000 thoughts we're going to have today, 90% of them are the same thoughts from the day before. It's also estimated that 85% of those thoughts are negative, stinking 
thinking thoughts. And, and uh, Joan Carver, I'm not calling you out here. I'm calling you up. You said, what's wrong with me? That is a negative thought. There's nothing wrong with you. Everything is on the way. Nothing is in the way. So let's ref let's change the question from what's wrong with me to what can I learn here? What kind of thoughts can I think today that are going to serve my future? And when you have a negative thought roll in, because they're going to roll in every, every day, it's guaranteed, no matter how successful you are, let it pass and then choose a better thought. And the better you get at that, and it's very hidden, it's when you're walking your dog, it's when you're brushing your teeth, it's when you're washing dishes. Like, what are you thinking? Start to choose better thoughts. It's the greatest power we have as a human being. Dogs, cats, and animals don't have this power. They can't choose their thoughts. We can. And the more consistent you are with that, and look, I teach this to my Keto Camp Academy students. If you're on here and you're in my academy, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We talk a lot about the inner sizing before the exercising, because if your thinking is stinking, your dreams are shrinking. Neville Goddard said, we are only limited by weakness of attention and poverty of imagination. So Joan, you got this. I encourage you. Small little tweaks each day lead to giant peaks in your life. And yes, there's going to be setbacks. There's going to be challenges but it's never about the setback. It is always about the get back. Setbacks are setups for something great. So instead of saying, what's wrong with me? Let's ask, what can I learn? What's one habit change I could make tomorrow that's better for my life and my health that I didn't do today? And then stack that habit and then stack another habit from there and just keep pushing forward. Now, if you want my help, um, we have a ton of videos on our YouTube channel. You might want to start with my 10-part series on keto. It's in our playlist section on our YouTube channel, Keto Camp on YouTube. We have our Keto Camp podcast where we release three videos every week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And if you want my coaching and an actual step-by-step -step system, then the Keto Camp Academy is uh, what you would want there, which is ketocampacademy.com. Hope that helps, Joan. You got this. Keep me posted. We support you, okay? Live in low-carb mind, my mama's womb. That's right. First seven years of our life is where we um, create these paradigms. Jimmy Moore in the house. Love you, bro. I know Becky could relate. I see your hand there. One step at a time. Yep, that's correct. Yep, getting back after the holidays. I understand that. It is a fickle little beast, the brain is. So let me see. I am taking questions here. Um, feel free to start sending them to me. I'm going to check YouTube and Facebook, and then I'm going to check TikTok and Sorry, that's my YouTube. Um, I see Elise from Tallahassee. God bless you too. You, uh, Lisa, excuse me. Tallahassee is north of me. I'm down in Miami Beach. Uh, Dan says, I've done black seed oil. I've seen black seed oil being hyped lately. I assume it falls into the same category of the other seed oils. Is it no bueno, no good? Uh, Dan, it depends on the processing of it. Black seed oil could be great. You want to find a company that gets organic non-GMO and does cold uh, pressed black seed oil. And there's many benefits to that. There's benefits for the immune system. Uh, there's benefits for inflammation. So at, at the company that I use for black seed oil, and I wouldn't have it every day, but I would throw it in from time to time. The company I use is called Andrea's Seed Oils. And I know you're thinking seed oils, Ben, you always talk about seed oils being bad. Not always. We don't want to throw the baby out with the bath water. It depends on the sourcing and the processing. So Andrea's Seed Oils, they have a great black seed oil terrific. I have it in my pantry there. Um, so I would check them out. I also interviewed their founder on my Keto Camp podcast a few years ago. Hey, love your videos. I'm curious if you are familiar with Dr. Paul Saladino Carnivore Code. Just curious on your opinion if you are. Yeah. Um, thank you for watching the videos. I've interviewed Paul twice already. Um, most recently, two months ago. It was actually the longest podcast I've recorded on the, on the show. It was about two hours long. Uh, I think he's a brilliant man. He's a good dude as well. Uh, I don't agree with everything he shares, but a lot of the stuff he shares is terrific. And it's really relatable to those who have leaky gut, autoimmune disease. You could really get value from it. So I love Paul Saladino. Uh, go check out my interviews with him. I, I love carnivore so much that I have an entire chapter in my book that I wrote about carnivore. And in my Keto Camp Academy, I have an entire pillar built out because I see it as a great tool. Now, I don't recommend 
doing carnivore for the rest of your life. Uh, I know that now he's added fruit back into the, into the mix, but his message is look, it's speaking to people who are metabolically healthy, right? If you're metabolically unhealthy, like 88% of Americans, that's what the study shows. The University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, 2018, said 88% of Americans are metabolically unhealthy and inflexible. Then you wouldn't do fruit and meat. You would probably just do meat or do meat and some veggies if your gut is healthy. So I don't know. A long question. I think he's great. Uh, I don't agree with everything, but I did interview him a couple times. So you could go watch that on my Keto Camp podcast and YouTube channel as well. Westfield just donated 10 bucks on YouTube. That is awesome, man. Thank you so much. And I always love seeing you on here. Your question is, after 30 days of strict keto, I fell off the wagon yesterday and indulged in chips galore. <laughs> what's, the big, what's the quickest way to get back on track and minimize damage? Yeah, good question. I'm sure it's very relatable to so many people. So I would say, forget about it. I, I Not about the setback, it's about the get back. So what were you doing before that that was working for you? Get right back on course. What structure can you put in place so that if that opportunity arises again to indulge on chips galore, those are your words, you overcome that. Maybe the chips need to get out of the house. Maybe you need to increase your protein so you're not hungry. Maybe you need to increase your fat. Maybe you got to work on your sleep. Uh, but go right back to what you were doing. You know, intermittent fasting, keto, sleep, the foundations, thoughts. Forget about it. It happened if you keep dwelling on it. The challenge is that so many people have a cheat meal and a cheat meal turns into a cheat day. A cheat day turns into a cheat week. A cheat week turns into a cheat month. And then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, what just happened? So we want to close the gap and turn a cheap month to a cheap meal and then a cheap meal to a feast meal. I don't like the word cheap meal, but a feast meal. So what structure can you put in place? So if that opportunity arises again with the chips, you're able to overcome. Maybe you have a conversation with your family that we don't put this in the household. If we're going to have it, we're going to do it strategic and we're going to do it. And we go to a restaurant because it's easier to snack on bad things when it's in your pantry versus having to go and drive to a restaurant or drive somewhere to get it. So that's would be my recommendation for you. Joan says, thank you. I got this. I'll get you. I'll get back to you on my success. Can't wait to hear back about your success, Joan. You got this. I know sauerkraut is healthy. And so I try to eat it, but the only way I can eat it is to warm it up on, warm it up in bacon grease. Is that killing benefit? Interesting, Dorian. Sauerkraut, sauerkraut warmed up in bacon grease. I haven't tried that but I would try that. Is it killing the benefits? Um, I don't know. My thought is maybe it might be killing some of the prebiotics and enzymes, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and if it is, is it killing all of it? Probably not. So I think it's fine. Uh, if that's the way you could get it in, it's the way you could get it in. But if you could go for raw, that would be better. That would be better. Um, let's see. The mind is a terrible thing to waste. That's right. Dang, IG doesn't like me today. Why, Becky? What happened? Yeah, that's right, Jimmy. I, I saw your comment after I said it. Uh, my brother from Orlando, Alvaro. Uh, bro, I've been living in keto lifestyle for around four to five years. Now I'm doing carb cycle. 10% fat, 45% protein, 45% carbs. And I test my ketones 10 days after. I'm in ketosis. Why? Um, how many total carbs is that? When you say 45% carbs, how many total carbs are you having for the day? And when you say you test your ketones after 10 days of doing this approach or 10 days after doing keto again, you're still in ketosis. Um, that's a good sign though. I mean, it shows you're very metabolically flexible. Your body is processing the carbs well, but if your goal is to flex out of ketosis, which I think would be great, then maybe you want to bump up your total carbs. I don't know what 45% of carbs equates to in terms of grams, but uh, around 100 grams to 125 grams of carbohydrates should be enough to bump you out of ketosis intentionally and see what happens next. Paradigms of the homeostasis, homeostasis in our life makes up automatic, but it's great to break them up. That's right. Paradigms are a B. 
I'm not going to say the word. They are a B. Uh, I'll just say nicely. They're jerks. It's a jerk. Uh, will I maintain? What will I maintain my lost weight with OMAD like every day, but dirty keto? Um, maybe, but what keto shouldn't be used. I wouldn't look at keto as a weight loss tool. I will look at keto and do keto as a health tool. Yeah, you might be able to maintain your lost weight doing OMAD and dirty keto, but are you creating metabolic damage? Are you shortening your lifespan? Are you going to feel better? The answer is no, probably not. And doing OMAD every day, even clean keto or dirty keto, you're not going to get enough protein. So number one, I don't like OMAD every day. OMAD is one meal a day if you're not sure what that is. Number two, um, I, 30 keto is not good, especially vegetable seed oils. So mix it up and do some days where you're not doing OMAD. I would recommend and eat as clean as possible because you don't want to just focus on the scale. Maybe you're losing weight, but you're getting unhealthy. You're getting, um, unhealthier. So look at it from a health perspective, not a weight loss perspective. What about be my advice? Yep, Alina says, inundate your subconscious mind with positive thoughts to create new neural pathways. That is right, Alina. Hey, Brian, good to see you, brother. Your podcast on my show is coming out this Friday. Brian Grin, host of the Get Lean, Eat Clean podcast. I'm going to email you soon about that. And I also interviewed Jimmy Moore recently, second time, where we talked a lot about sleep. That'll come out at the end of the month of March, too. That's That was a fun conversation, Jimmy. Uh, how is safflower cold-pressed? If it's organic, non-GMO, cold-pressed safflower, that's okay. Um, I think it's okay. YouTube, keep sending your questions. I see a question here about protein from one. And on YouTube, hit the thumbs up button so... The algorithm knows you're getting value. TikTok, I'll get to your question right now after a couple here on YouTube, and then I'll get to Facebook next. So I have a question about protein. If you're supposed to eat 100 grams of protein, that does that does not mean you eat four ounces of protein, right? How does that conversion work? Yeah, four ounces of protein is not 100 grams. The best way to see an accurate conversion is to use an app. They're free. If you go to chronometer.com slash keto camp, if you could post that in the YouTube live chat, Alina, chronometer.com slash keto camp, you could download it. Let me give you an example. Um, I will log into my chronometer and show you exactly how to do this. So let me share my screen. Share screen, chronometer. So once you download it, I like using the web browser, but you could use it in your phone too. So let's say you had for breakfast, eggs cooked. You click that one medium egg. Let's say you had four eggs cooked. Add, uh, let's say you had an avocado. I'm going to go with the Florida one, one whole avocado without the skin and seed. Add that. And then let's say for lunch, you had a ribeye, rib eye steak visible fat eaten. Uh, and then let's say you had eight ounces of that. Add that into the mix. So as you can see, it's giving you the exact calculations. That's pretty accurate. Chronometer has a really good database. There's other ones out there that are free, like MyFitnessPal and Carb Manager, but I like Chronometer. And you, if you scroll down here, like based off of what I just input, that's 89 grams of protein, 83 grams of fat, 25 grams of carbs. So this is gonna be the best way, Juan, for you to determine how many grams of protein you're having. Now, let's just remove these, uh, delete selected, delete selected, delete selected. And let's say you wanna know, you had, um, I think the question was four ounces of protein. It depends on the protein here. So let's say you had um, chicken breast, uh, skinless or skin e in chicken breast. And let's say we go by ounces and we put four ounces here. You can see that's 31 grams of protein. It gives you it right here. So that's going to be the best way for you to determine it. Um, isn't our good rule of thumb, one pound of protein isn't, 
isn't it a good rule of thumb that one pound of protein is 100 grams of protein? 16 ounces. Uh, let's see. 16 ounces is... No, it's a little bit more. Um, it's about 124 grams according to the chronometer calculation. 16 ounces, I believe, is a pound, right? So 16 ounces is 124. So I hope that helps, you know, for those who saw me do that on YouTube. And then I saw a question here from... Marta, how do you feel about protein modified fast diet? I think it's a great tool. Uh, Maria Emmerich and Craig Emmerich, I interviewed both of them on my podcast. We talked about it. I think it's a great tool. Uh, I see the value in it for sure. Yeah, I want to eat two meals a day. Having Hey, Summer, good to see you. Summer is in my detox program and she's off to a great start. I want to eat two meals a day having been OMAD for over a half a year, but I need some spring weather to get outside for more exercise. <laughs> yeah. A year, a half a year of OMAD is too much. So yes, mix it up, do two meals a day and get that protein intake. So if you're wondering how much protein you should have, I think a good rule of thumb would be one gram of protein per pound of your ideal body weight, your lean body weight. So let's say you weigh 175 pounds, but your ideal body weight is 135 pounds. So you would eat 135 grams of protein animal base per day to get that doesn't mean you have to do it every day that's where the value of like a protein modified fast or intermittent fasting or omad you could balance it out with that but most days you want to hit that john says pasture raised organic eggs bacon Aged cheddar cheese just broke my fast after 19 hours, six eggs, lightly fried and grass-fed butter, and a half pound of thick-cut bacon. John, I'm coming over, dude. I hope you save some for me. That sounds delicious, and good job with your 19-hour fast. You're welcome, Juan. I'm glad that helps. Let me get to the TikTok, and then I'm going to get to Facebook here. There was a question on TikTok. I started a keto diet, lost weight, normalized blood glucose, felt great. Now noticing a little belly fat. Yarlak, that's awesome. Congratulations and go Patriots. I see your, your thumbnail there. Um, yeah, mix it up now. Eat different keto foods, maybe flex out, maybe add some strength training, at, make sure your sleep is good. Cold exposure is great for belly fat. Find ways to activate brown fat. Uh, hot exposure too does that. And maybe do some carnivore. So mix things up. If you're noticing belly fat and things are changing, mix things up like a great personal trainer always mixes things up to get the body the client's body guessing and adapting same thing here david in the uk good to see you london it's raining there yeah it was raining here this morning here in miami but it's not hello watching from las vegas hey dan i'm going to be speaking in las vegas this month march 19th and march 20th at the biohacking congress in las vegas nevada so you could buy a ticket in person or you could get a ticket online and there's going to be amazing speakers there. I would love to see you in person. Biohackingcongress.com. Our coupon code to get 20% off your ticket, either in person or online, is Ben Azadi. Thank you for all the tags as well. You are awesome. I've been doing keto. I've been doing keto and intermittent fasting 16.8, says Suba. We, ha we are having to a work to do. We are having work to do two years due to COVID and I'm about to get a cheat day. Is it best to have two cheat days as a weekend or to do one and resume the diet? I don't like the idea of a cheat day or a cheat meal. I like more of a feast meal. So if you're going to feast it up and flex out of ketosis and good job doing keto and intermittent fasting for two years, by the way, do it with healthy, healthy food, healthy carbs, healthy protein. That's what I would recommend for you. And uh, you could choose to do one and see if that works for you. If you could choose to do two and that works better for you, either one's fine. Just I, I wouldn't look at it as a cheat meal. I always look at it. I would look at it as a flex feast meal. When fasting, can I eat high carb bread? Um, no, Valentin. Uh, that would break your fast, and and it's also not a good way to break the fast. You don't want to break the fast with a high glycemic meal. Thank you, Sylvia. Jennifer says, visiting your state from California in Boynton Beach. Cool. Well, enjoy Florida. Boynton Beach is not too far from me. Black seed. I was referring to black seed oil, not flax seed. Black seed. Black, B-L-A-C-K oil. Detroit Axiom, what's up, my friend? 
You helped me a lot. It's been two years. Thank you, Ben. All the best. Awesome. You're like, I'm so grateful. Someone told me canola oil in third world country are healthy, not like USA and Canada. Um, somebody told me that somebody is a liar. <laughs> canola oil is not healthy no matter how you, how you cut it. Um, so no, I wouldn't use canola oil just by the processing of it. It's going to be inflammatory. Cryotherapy is great. Absolutely. There's a benefit that'll activate some brown fat. That'll uncouple some mitochondria. Yep. How do you get the push to start? How do I encourage kids? Well, you encourage kids by doing it first and inspiring them. So how do you get started? Find out what your why is. When the why is strong, the how becomes easier. Reasons come before results. So why do you want to get started? Why do you want to change your health? Why do you want to change your behavior and lifestyle changes? Why do you want to cre create lifestyle changes? So get clear on your why. And it's usually five layers behind where you, what you think your why is. So keep asking yourself why after you come up with an answer. And five layers beneath that is your real why. Keep it in front of you and keep your, reminding yourself why you're doing this. And then change your health and then you in inspire your kids. What is your opinion on fluoride? My opinion on fluoride is to stay away, far, far away from fluoride, unless you want to have issues in the future. Fluoride is a toxic chemical that so that's in toothpaste and dentists use it. Not good. Fluoride is not good for you. Hey, Constance, good to see you on here. Jennifer says the time the time difference is interesting. With intermittent fasting seems to be more hungry. I'm not sure if that's a question. Um, good morning, Bakersfield, California. Cold pressed safflower oil is fine if you get non GMO organic. Let's see, I'm just checking Instagram for some questions here. I missed a whole bunch of questions that came in. Okay. Question came here on YouTube about what do you consider healthy carbs? I'll give you a few, but the best thing to do for all of you, if you want to, free download of a keto grocery shopping list where I give you the best proteins, best fats, best carbs, how to test glucose and ketones, the best sweeteners, and the worst ones out there, then download my free guide. It is over at ketocampblueprint.com, ketocampblueprint.com, camp with the K, and download it. But healthy carbs are going to be fruits, sweet potato, yams, yuca, white rice, of course, only if you're metabolically healthy, those would be great for keto flex days, but download my blueprint, ketocampblueprint.com. How do we avoid fluoride? You buy fluoride-free toothpaste. If you go to a dentist, make sure you request them not to use it uh, and you don't drink tap water. That's how you avoid it. Yeah, Katina, I was talking about black seed oil. If you could find a cold pressed black seed oil, that's great, black seed oil. Finished Keto Flex, loved it, but is it necessary to do Pillar 3 if I don't have an audio, any autoimmune? Thanks for reading the book. Um, it's not necessary, but I do see the value of Pillar 3, which is carnivore, whether you have autoimmune or not. It's just a great healing tool that will help the gut out. So I do recommend it. What do you mean by hot and cold exposure? What I mean by that, Kiki, is going to a cold bath, a cold plunge, a cold tub, like Jimmy Moore has been doing every day this year, and then go into a sauna or a hot shower, kind of back and forth. Uh, that's activating, it's a stress and activating hormesis in the body. I'm having bladder and kidney issues. Could it be from too much protein? I don't know. And I would speak to a medical uh, professional about that, Sherry. I could tell you this, there's no research that backs up protein will damage kidneys unless there's a, already a history of protein uh, excuse me, of kidney disease. My dad has uncontrolled diabetes for years. I recently told my mom to do keto with him. His numbers were better. His new endocrinologist told him he needs more carbs. He's super thin. His insulin was changed and numbers are even higher though he's still doing keto. Yeah, Agnes, I would love to help your dad. Send him over to me. Um, maybe he's eating the wrong fats. Maybe he is, has SIBO. Uh, maybe he is eating too many carbs. Uh, maybe he needs to work on his sleep. Those are areas that I would visit with him. Um, so send him over to my academy. I'd love to help him. It would be an honor. You know, diabetes, 
type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance. The great thing about type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance, it's fairly easy to resolve. And I, and I say that with empathy, uh, and I sincerely mean that. Diabetes type 2 and insulin resistance is fairly easy to resolve. I worked with individuals in my Keto Camp Academy. They've done it in 60 days or in a year. It depends on how, you know, diligent you are with the actions, but it's fairly easy to resolve and it can be done. I am going to answer a couple more questions and then I need to get off because I have a 1 p.m. training I'm doing for the TCD practitioners. So let's see. What does your daily eating plan look like? Ben, thanks for asking, Angie. I typically intermittent fast in the morning. I'll have a cup of uh, coffee an hour and a half after I wake up. Purity coffee, French press. I will put one tablespoon of MCT oil C8 in there and some sea salt. Mix it together and I'll drink that. As you can see, I had it this morning. I'll drink that for the next few hours. And then I will continue fasting usually until 1 or 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And then I'll have a protein-rich meal. Uh, could be some a piece of steak with avocado and some greens. Or if I'm doing carnivore, it'll just be the steak and maybe some like um, bacon, like turkey bacon I like, or eggs. And then I'll have another meal around 5, 6 p.m., which will be my dinner. So I typically do two meals a day. I prim primarily eat protein and fat, and I am doing mostly meat. I do really well like carnivore-ish, but not 100% carnivore. And on Sundays, I typically have a keto flex day where I'll have 200 grams of carbs, no fasting. Actually, I, I do fast on Sundays just because I play basketball in the morning. So I do fast until like 2. But then I'll feast from like 2 to 6 p.m. on Sunday and higher carbs, higher protein, lower fat. So it's kind of what a day in the li life looks like for me. Keto flu. Yeah, electrolytes. Keep the electrolytes up. Maybe bump up your carbs a little bit and then drop them back down slowly. Keto camp cocktail will help with that. So water, sea salt, apple cider vinegar, and some cream of tartar. I have celiac and gastritis. Is keto any good, especially since you have gastritis and stomach acid? I would explore carnivore. I would work with a professional. This is not medical advice, but I would explore carnivore as a way to help with that. And then um, if you have low stomach acid, you might want to consider taking HCL, hydrochloric acid. Christy, hi, Ben. I'm on day three of Pillar One. Congratulations. Going well, except last night went into AFib. I ate four eggs, saturated, excuse me, sauteed onions. I am converted right after I ate. Um, yeah, again, not medical advice, but magnesium could possibly help with AFib. Uh, make sure your sleep is good. Doing some grounding could possibly help. I don't know if you, your toxicity load, but I know that having high toxicity like mercury could signal AFib as well. So I would, I would, I would explore those areas, Christy. And getting rid of bad fats and fish oil too. Uh, I should add that into the mix. I believe bad fats and fish oil could lead to a heart issues. Have you tried chocolate, mint, element tea in your coffee? Do not do it. You'll want too much coffee. I have done it summer. It's really good. Uh, I spoke to Rob Wolf about that on my when I interviewed him on my Keto Camp podcast. It is so good. OMAD five days a week sounds a little excessive. Uh, you're not going to get enough protein on those days. So maybe two to three times a week would be probably better. All right, my friends, I need to sign off to get ready for a training I'm doing uh, for TCD practitioners on keto. If this was valuable to you, please share it with somebody you know. Please hit the thumbs up button on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Go listen to the Keto Camp podcast. We re released the episode this morning with Dr. Jason Fung. And if you want to learn about CGMs, just as like a final message here, CGMs are amazing tools to see what your glucose is doing 24-7. They're, they're it stands for Continuous Glucose Monitor. Check out NutriSense. They're amazing. I just got another set. I'm going to be putting it on soon of a 14-day sensor. So Nutrisense.io slash KetoCamp 
everybody go to that website. Alina, please put it in the chat box. Nutrisense.io slash keto camp. And if you use the coupon code, um, shoot, what's the code? I think it's Ben30. Let me let me verify that for you. I think you'll get $30 off. Nutrisense. Let me verify that for you. Yeah, Ben30, and you'll get $30 off any of their CGM programs. You also get a registered dietitian who you work with on the app. They're amazing. So Nutrisense.io slash Keto Camp, Camp with the K. Ben30 at checkout, you'll get $30 off their CGM. And CGMs are for years have been hard to get because you need a prescription. This is a way to remove the barriers. And it's one of the best things you can do to see what your glucose is doing to really match the food, your lifestyle to your glucose level. So uh, Nutrisense.io slash Keto Camp, Ben30 at checkout. I will be live with you again next Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. If I missed your question today, bring it to me next Wednesday. And the if you're on time, I'll get to the questions that come in as, as soon as possible. So I'll see you on there. In the meantime, go subscribe to the Keto Camp podcast. We have some new videos coming out on our Keto Camp YouTube channel. Connect with me on TikTok at the Ben Azadi. And thank you so much for joining me today. Go ahead and have an amazing, blessed day. I'm grateful for you. And I'll